Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining us. We have a couple questions for you here. Um, we'll start with Doug. Hey, Chris. How are you today, sir? I'm good. And you? Good. Thanks. Um, so a couple times this year, you've told us about changing some of your routines, doing meditation one time and studying Rodman film another time. What triggered it that you thought you needed to do that? And why did you change your routine like that? Um, I mean, I know I was a better player than what I was showing. Obviously, uh, I wasn't playing my best basketball and I was focused on the wrong thing. And there's a lot of things that, you know, by watching film, doing a meditation, freeing up your mind, um, you know, the game becomes a lot easier. So, um, you know, it helped me focus on the right thing. And also realizing that, you know, there's tough stretch in a, in a season where you're just not playing well and you feel like nothing's going well. So it definitely helped me out to, you know, get off this stuff a little bit. Mm -hmm. Most players who change their routine like that do it after dis discussing it with people. Who are the people in your circle that sort of led you to make that decision? Um, I mean, my teammates helped me a lot. Um, Eve, obviously, um, you know, I've been, he's been coaching me since, I'm, since I started. So he helped me out a lot too, my mom, uh, my family. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I got a good circle. Obviously, they're helping me out and, you know, stay, make me stay with it and, you know, Sometimes you get too hard on yourself and you need some people that, you know, that knows you outside of basketball to make you realize you're still doing the right things and things will come around. And I think that really helped me out. Yeah, well, you, you know, you're not a young man, but I'm just wondering why uh, early in your career you didn't come to these conclusions. And can you just walk us through the process that got you to here? Like, I, I don't say why didn't you do it when you're 23, but why are you doing it when you're 28, I guess, is the right – maybe the way. I mean, I guess – I, it, it comes to a point where, like, you know, I'm obviously like I'm 29, but like I, have, I haven't played basketball for a long time. So, right, right. you know, get hit by a wall or, you know, most of my career I've been doing the same thing and I've always been successful. So when you hit a wall, uh, you kind of make you think about, you know, what else that you have to do to make it better and to get better. And I think that's really what helped me out is at the end of the day, like I haven't played a lot of basketball to that level where I'm able to say that I had a routine that was working every time. And, um, you know, now you're playing a lot of games. And I've been in Toronto for a long time where, you know, that was a tough stretch for me and I needed to figure it out. And I think it helped me out just focusing on the, what I needed to do better. And also I feel like, you know, I grew as a player a lot this year more than any other year just because, you know, I started bad and then I had to figure it out my ways and I'll find ways to still be able to play basketball um, with a lot of, like, six guys on this team that could actually score and, you know, not becoming a defender. And there's a lot of stuff that I had to learn just playing different positions. So, um, you know, that's all happened in one year. And I feel like this is the reason why my roots had to change because um, I'm doing a lot more on the floor now. Great. Thanks so much. Appreciate it as always, Chris. No problem. And next we'll go to Amy. Hey, Chris. Thanks for your time. Um, I was going to ask you about Delano. I mean, you know more than anybody what, big numbers with the 905 can mean to your game with the Raptors. And uh, I'm wondering with your experience, how you were able to gain some confidence and maybe that he's kind of doing right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, when you go to G league, it's really to, you know, um, kind of give you like, keep you that confidence. Cause obviously sometimes you don't get those minutes, uh, but it's also it helps you, work, uh, you know, work on your game. And I think um, Delano, when he goes over there, you could tell that, you know, he, he could play and, you know, um, for me, when I was going over there, I was just trying to figure out what what else can I could do. And, you know, you're the number one option. So you're learning so much stuff at the same time. Like um, I watched the game yesterday in the fourth quarter, how Delano took over. And, you know, you probably don't have the chance to do that in the, the Raptors, but it's nice that you're still able to do that and know for yourself. So when it comes to the games, you might have to hit a big shot and you'll be ready knowing that, you know, even in G League and you can do that every time. So it's kind of like a refreshment in your back of your mind, just knowing that, you're still able to do those stuff. And I was also going to ask, it's no secret, the last couple of games for you guys, it's been a slower start and a really good game at the end. Uh, are you noticing a, like, as to why, or is it something that you guys have talked about at all, just getting off to a better start, especially tonight against a good Charlotte team? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think we, you know, we've noticed that um, we have bad starts, but I think, uh, like I said, uh, we have good games where like it just we need to get punching them out before. And sometimes, you know, um, you know, we wait too long to start getting activated with that's what's the problem. But I think, you know, coaches and stuff, they uh, you know, they told us about it. We can't just wait till um, we're down 10 to stay. OK, we're going to start playing. So 
obviously we want to change this aspect of the game for us because, like I said, if we would just play the game like that, the whole 48, a lot, we would come up with a lot of more wins. So. All right. See you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And next we'll go to Adam. Hey, Chris, um, I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, you talked a lot about, you know, your coaching staff and your support staff. Um, have you had any conversations with, uh, you know, Bobby or Masai recently, just, uh, you know, encouraging or, or talking about uh, anything like that? Just any conversations with upper management, just sort of about your your whole role within the organization? Yeah, uh, I mean, Masai kept telling me that at the same time. Like, he, I mean, I feel like he saw it for a long time that I was able to do a lot of different stuff and not only focus on three-point and stuff, so... Those conversations you know, with Bobby and Masai, I've been having a lot. I'm really close to Bobby and, you know, like I said, they always believed in what I was able to do. And it was just, you know, my job to go over there and do it. So, um, you know, now the conversation are more about keeping, keep doing the same thing and staying healthy, obviously, um, you know, since, you know, I get to, to show what I'm capable of doing, but uh, I got to do the right thing too. And, you know, it's easy to go back to, wanted to jack threes and all that. So um, for now, you know, obviously, since I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, um, you know, they're, they're telling me to keep doing and that's what I, you know, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we do have one question in French for you here, Chris, from Mike. Salut, Chris. Um, um, sur ce match face, face aux Hornets, pour toi, quels sont, uh, quels sont les points importants pour vous pour, uh, pour aller le gagner? Il euh, faut commencer tôt. Comme je dis, il ne faut pas les laisser commencer à, à, à appuyer qu'on commence la game quand on est en bas de 10. Euh, je pense que euh, Miko, beaucoup la balle, il passe le ballon, euh, il shoot bien le 3 points. Alors, ils font beaucoup de choses qu'une euh, que bonne équipe fait, mais je pense que si on joue agressif, puis euh, on commence par la première minute du game, je pense qu'on a de la chance. Euh, comme je dis, on est plutôt grand, on est physique, on a un peu de physique des fois. Alors, je pense qu'on doit focus sur ça. Puis aussi, euh, se rappeler que Comme j'ai dit, on est capable de revenir dans des games, mais si on était déjà en train de gagner, on n'aurait pas, on n'est pas besoin de mettre tout cet effort-là pour revenir. Uh, Dalano et, um, et Utah se sont bien relancés avec les 905 hier. Toi, tu es passé par là, de passer par les 905, revenir avec les Raptors. Uh, quel conseil tu leur donnerais pour uh, parvenir à, à, répli à, à répliquer ce qu'ils ont fait avec les 905 avec les Raptors? Il faut juste rester confiant avec la confiance, puis savoir que le, le, ton nom va t'appeler éventually. Je pense que ça, ça c'est une chose que j'ai toujours fait. Quand j'étais dans le G League, euh, j'étais un two je ne jouais pas beaucoup de ce temps-là, mais je me suis toujours préparé. Je me suis dit que tout ce que je faisais dans le G League, un jour, ça allait porter plus fruit et j'allais être capable de le faire dans la NBA. Alors, je pense que c'est juste ça, garder la confiance, puis aussi savoir que euh, quand tu vas là-bas, il faut faire les. Comme je dis, il faut que tu montres qu ce que tu es capable de faire, sinon. Comment on peut savoir que tu peux faire ça dans l'NBA? Parfait. Merci beaucoup, Chris, et bon match. Merci. Thanks, Chris. That's all the questions we have for you.